The Throne, or Sadur as its current title, is a period drama that recounts a famous historical outrage with a sense of empathy as potent as its anger. The screenplay centers around the notorious 1760 incident in which King Yongjo orders his son, the 27-year-old Crown Prince Sadur, to be locked inside a large wooden rice chest deprived of food and water in the merciless heat after being trialled for attempts to assassinate the king. The prince lay in there for 8 days and 8 nights before meeting his creator. It is interesting to note while no harm can, by law, be placed upon the royals, the king's interpretation of this law comes off as choosing his own political life over his actual son. While the life story of Prince Sadur have been the focus of other Korean dramas and films like Secret Doors and Warrior Byak Dong Su, depicted as a power-hungry king or the complication of politics during the times of Joseon's, the throne offers a decisively sympathetic view over the crown prince and in many ways represents a belated attempt at vindication. Following the film, King Yeonjo already has an unstable rule. With the late birth of his heir, he was overjoyed. He immediately sets the child up as the crown prince, sending him away to his own household where he was raised by mostly nannies and nurses. And from an early age, Prince Sado had poor influences. <laughs> At a young age, Prince Sado was praised by Sado repeatedly for his early intelligence and wisdom. But as he got older, Prince Sado showed no interest in studying or in memorizing the Confucian verses that represents the pillar of the kingdom. Instead, Prince Sado showed an interest for art and sword play which led the king to slowly sink into deeper disappointment as he realizes how far the apple has seemed to fall off the tree. At the age of 25, the king installs Prince Sado as regent, hoping that the responsibility of weighing in on judicial matters will lead him to a more kingly structure. Instead, Prince Sado will respond by issuing idealistic and non-royalistic decree that would undermine his father's long-time policies, which has generally aided wealthy noblemen at the expense of the poor. Things don't improve much when Sado's wife, Lady Hyongyong, gave birth to their son, Jongjo. On the contrary, the presence of a new heir merely complicates the already tricky ties between the king and the crown prince. Many interpretations of the crown prince's death have been made over the years. And while the film follows a more modern understanding of the life of the prince, the director did not fail to include earlier depictions of the prince. It is commendable that he did it in a subtle and tasteful manner while trying to better understand the prince. Early accounts of Prince Sado in Memories of Lady Hyongkyo, written by Lady Hyongkyo herself, portrayed the crown prince as a lunatic. His death was a result of the violence and uncontrollable behaviour. She described his lunacy as a result from his father's high expectation of his behaviour and studies. She notes that the prince would change his clothes as many as 30 times as his symptoms peaked. Records also show Prince Sado committing his first murder when he killed Kim hyang A, who was helping the prince to put on his clothes. After that, it is said that more than 100 people died by his hands. On the other hand, historian Lee Deok Yi, head of the Hang Haram Institute of History and Culture Studies, published a book titled The World Dream by Prince Sado. It reinterprets Prince Sado as a failure of prodigy who fell victim to fierce political battle. He explains in the book that Prince Sado was not crazy but faced an unfortunate death due to his revolutionary thinking. He explains the political intention behind Lady Hyongkyo's account, suggesting that she attempted to hide her family's misdeed of standing by while Sado died before their eyes. He also pointed out Noron, one of the leading political parties to which 
Lady Hyun Hyo's family belonged to helped to further disorient the relationship between father and son. At the end of the film, it is possible to interpret the throne as a waking on social hypocrisy as well as a refutation on the strict Confucian principles that the king has always lived by. But as the film points out that its primary assertion that men come before all laws and their crown is one that Confucius himself would have commanded. <laughs>